Hey, happy Tuesday morning, everyone. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is number 21 in our study of 1 Corinthians 15 and the resurrection. Paul was addressing and refuting the scoffers at Corinth who were denying the resurrection of the dead ones. I pointed out to you repeatedly, Paul was not dealing with people who were denying, quote, resurrection, period. They did not deny the resurrection of Jesus. They did not deny their own resurrection. They did not deny the resurrection of Christians who had died. They denied only, strictly, the resurrection of the dead ones. But Paul says, you cannot deny resurrection life to those the dead ones, without denying the resurrection of Christ, your own salvation, and the resurrection of Christians who have died. Now, let me drive this home in a very powerful way. Paul says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those, the King James says, who had fallen asleep. Now, that's not bad. Unfortunately, some translations render it, Christ became the first fruits of all those who will ever die. No, that is not the point. That is not a translation. That is a commentary. In the first place, panta, the word all, is not there. And the subjunctive is not there. It, it, you know, this is just reading into the text what is not there? This is truly eisegesis. Now, let me prove this to you. Paul says Christ became the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep. The, the Greek word that he, that he uses here is kikoime minon. This is in what is known as the perfect, and it is a participial form in the middle voice. Now, what does the perfect mean? It is something that took place in the past with a present bearing. So, as some translations try to get to the force of it, here, here's what I want you, want you to imagine in order to catch the power, in order to catch the force of Paul's use of the perfect participial form. All right? Imagine the cross of Jesus. The cross and the grave, the empty grave of Jesus. The scoffers were not denying that those after the cross would receive salvation. They believed that they, who came after the cross, were saved. They believed that Christians who had died after the cross, had not perished. This is the force of the perfect participle form. Here's the cross and the empty grave. Jesus came up out from among these people. Out from among. That's the force of the Greek. Jesus' resurrection was out from among the dead ones. Which means, of course, he wasn't resurrected out from among Christian dead. There were no Christians. None had died. But Jesus Christ was the first to be raised out from among those who had died before him. It is this group over here that the scoffers are saying, no resurrection life. And remember... I've already shared with you that Paul, although physical death is certainly there, that is not where Paul's theological focus lies because, as I've shared with you, Paul ten times uses either the present active indicative or the present passive indicative to say that those dead ones who had died before Jesus were being raised. Well, let me reiterate this point. The biologically dead of those who died before Jesus 
were not being raised from the dead. They were not being raised out of the grave. If so, boy, you talk about a silence. You know, we, we have a record when Paul raised Eutychus, Acts chapter 20. Well, if Paul's focus in 1 Corinthians 15 is on the raising of physically dead people out of holes in the ground, Paul affirmed ten times that they were being raised, and yet, while we've got a record of Eutychus being raised, we have no record of these dead ones being raised. What's going on here? What's going on here is the fact that Paul's not focused on the physically or the physical death. He is focused on the fact that they had experienced sin, death. He died and he rose for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant. Hebrews 9.15. This is part of the key to all this. So, when we look at what Paul actually says, when we honor the Greek tenses, it is more than obvious that Paul is dealing with scoffers who are denying resurrection life to those who had died before Jesus died. That's the old covenant saints. Paul is dealing with the identical thing that he did in Romans chapter 11 where the Gentiles were saying, Israel is cut off, Israel has no hope, Israel has no salvation. Paul is not dealing. Paul is not addressing what 99.9% .9 of the commentaries say, oh, Paul's dealing with people who just simply denied the resurrection. No, he's not. And we've got more on this, and it's powerful stuff. So we'll see you on the flip side.